This video is designed to help you start a tire recycling business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a tire recycling business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful tire recycling business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Tire recycling and disposal is one of the many business concepts that have emerged from the trend toward environmentally conscious entrepreneurism. In previous decades, worn out tires were either burned or dumped. But today, innovative entrepreneurs are finding ways to recycle tire rubber and turn a profit at the same time. Most tire recycling and disposal businesses act as an intermediary between consumers or repair shops and remanufacturing plants. But interested entrepreneurs should know that there is much more to this business model than collecting old tires and dropping them off at a remanufacturing facility. Tire recycling can only be profitable if you can identify both the supplier and the customer. The supplier will work on the front end to get you the raw rubber you need for processing. The customer on the back end will buy the processed rubber product you produce. Every tire that is collected needs to be graded into one of four quality categories. Tires that are in the best condition can be retreaded and resold to consumers, while tires that are in the lowest quality category are graded as crumb rubber for processing into the rubber mulch that is popular for private and public playgrounds. Tire recycling and disposal businesses rely heavily on networks and relationships, starting with recyclable tire suppliers. Tire sellers and repair shops can be a good source for used tires, although larger shops and franchises may already have relationships with tire manufacturers. Tires can also be collected from consumers themselves, through pickup services and other disposal opportunities. On the back end, tire recycling businesses need to develop relationships with companies that turn old tires into useful products. These companies may work with all grades of recycled tires, or specialize in just one or two. An alternative is to expand your business model to include remanufacturing. If you're just starting out, consider focusing on one or two recycled products, for example, rubber mulch, and outsourcing other products to larger manufacturers. The startup requirements for a tire recycling and disposal business depend on your business model. A simple business plan that relies completely on other manufacturers can get by with a mid-size panel truck for collections. If your plans call for limited or full tire remanufacturing, you will need to factor the cost of equipment and lease space into your business plan. Sourcing tires. Ideally, your suppliers should be located within a 150-mile radius of the location where you plan to set up shop. If they are any farther away, you will end up wasting time and money collecting old tires. The best way to get tires from point A to point B will depend on who your supplier is and how quickly the tires stack up at their location. A few different options to explore include 1. Offer a pickup service. A small car repair shop may only generate 20 passenger tires every two weeks. This small load can easily be picked up in a van or truck regularly, making recycling easy for the customer. 2. Deliver disposal containers. For larger volumes of tires, you may consider dropping off an empty dumpster to be picked up when it is full. This option makes loading and transportation easier for larger loads. It is especially helpful for larger diameter tires, as they are difficult to load and unload by hand. 3. Offer on-site drop-off. There will always be do-it-yourselfers that like to change their own tires. Designate an easily accessible spot on your property where small loads can be dropped off. Selling recycled tire products. Most recycled tire rubber does not find its way onto the playground as you might expect. In fact, most recycled tires are actually burned as tire-derived fuel, DDS. Unless you have a paper mill or cement plant nearby, DDS may not be in high demand in your area. You will need to take a hard look at the market around you to find your niche. Because of the high upfront costs associated with buying equipment, securing land, and hiring employees, it is best not to try to be a jack of all trades right out the gate. Find an area where demand is high and competition is low. Potential clients could include utility companies, construction contractors, athletic fields, and manufacturers. Ground rubber and crumb rubber are commonly used to manufacture many products that were once made exclusively of wood, asphalt, or plastics. Once you are satisfied that the market can support your growing new business, creating a detailed business plan is the next essential step. The initial investment to begin recycling tires will likely require either a small business loan or outside investor's assistance. In either case, you are unlikely to receive financial aid without a solid plan to pay back those loans. If this type of loan is out of reach, you might apply for a government grant. 
Grants at the federal level are limited but are available, through the Small Business Innovation Research Program, SBIR. This Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, program, awards funds to proposals that tackle high-priority EPA issues. Solid waste management involving waste tire removal, and disposal is one such issue. However, grants are limited to small businesses with less than 500 employees, and come with the requirement that the company demonstrates innovation in technology, and commercialization of their efforts to improve the environment. The next part of the video is not specific to a tire recycling business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the tire recycling business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful tire recycling business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. 
A large number of small businesses fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses and multiply it by three. This is the amount of cash you will need to cover operating expenses for three months. Deposit this amount in a savings account before opening your business. Use it only for those purposes listed in the above list because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs to the total expenses for three months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for three months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month because of seasonal patterns and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance is going to be subject to such factors as the following. Failure to recognize seasonal trends. Excessive cash taken from the business for living expenses. Too rapid expansion and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a tire recycling business, is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself. But don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free tire recycling business plan gift. Go to the description below this video to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.